Hey everyone, Joe here from Action X. Welcome to What's in the Tube, or welcome back. If this is your ninth Walker season two episode review, I just want to say by the top of the start, Jesus freaking Christ. Um, we're not spoiling the end of the episode, but like, damn, when they said Walker returns March third, I'm like. I thought for a second, wait, aren't we in January still? Yeah, so technically January is about to end, but the show's not coming back till March. A full month, and I think that's the biggest Walker gap that I remember, because, I mean, again, like, Walker's first season was 18 episodes, but, like, what they did was they they they, they took these two-week breaks, so it's like, it didn't feel that long in retrospective, but now... A whole month, like we're going out for the entire February with no Walker. That that that's crazy to me. Um, but it, it does allow us to give us a little bit of time to do some other stuff, and as well as we have some big stuff for February in general. So uh, that that'll be great for us. But anyway, here today on What's on the Two, we're reviewing the ninth episode of Walker season two. Overall thoughts, just general going into this one. I'm not surprised. I think we're at the point with Walker now as a show where I'm not surprised anymore. And that's not, I'm not trying to say that as a bad thing. I'm just trying to say that as in general of, hey, where this is something that you shouldn't be surprised. Because Walker is not your typical TV show. Like, I'm still getting into this, this, to this new era of, like, don't ex expect the unexpected. And also just be, be don't be surprised when someone tries to do something new. Where, for me, typical TV, this could have been, Serato could have been the villain for that the entire season. And, again, like, so much of the, everything that happened last season, like, I initially thought the whole Emily mystery was going to take the entire season. It didn't. I mean, majority of it did, but, like, we got in big chunks of it instead of, like, the big finale where it's, like, we get everything at that time period. We didn't get that here. And same thing with this season. So far, like, I think they've done a decent enough job of trying to set up multiple angles of the story to allow us to have things to work with and to figure out what the next thing is when we do see it. And one of the great things that I noticed was they definitely understood like, yeah, we have these things called Walker breaks where we take very huge amount of times and we're going to write that into the show. So it's like after this episode's big cliffhanger, you have to wait a whole month to see what is the reaction to the big cliffhanger. And I'm like, dude, that's so smart. But then I get some other, some other, uh, TV shows do that, but it's it's just in the nature of like like for example like I keep saying like a lot. I apologize. When Age of the Shield first season, the first show I th that was kind of like my step into like modern actual serialized television. You get those like anyone who saw Age of the Shield back then like oh my oh, and I'm just like, for a second almost ten years ago. It's crazy for me to think of uh, that I'm that old. That when those were like you got an episode. And then you have to wait a whole month for the next episode. And then clearly they were only doing that because they had to lead up to the, to the lead up for Winter Soldier, which I understood now almost a decade removed. But back then I was like, I was so confused. Like, why are we getting, we got seven episodes almost consistently weekly. Then we get one in January, one in February, two in March. And then we get the rest in April and May. Like clearly it's that kind of weird thing about even a broadcast schedule. It is so difficult to nail down perfectly. I think the only way that, personally, I think I think the CW's kind of mastered with majority of their shows is that half of their lineup, they literally air all the episodes when it's not in production or when they're, like, really ahead of the curve. I still remember Flash last season, I think, went throughout the entire run without a break, excluding certain holidays, which is crazy because normally you would get those built-in breaks. Which, I, again, I, I, it could just be, like, changing time, so they're, they're adapting, so. Walker is still very much, um, they're working in between. Like, they're not 100% there, but they're working what they got, which works. So, but anyway, I, I think I like this week's episode. It definitely gave, gave us some sort of, sort of decent conclusion for this, for this, um, this arc. And it kind of gives you a, a decent picture of, like, what you can expect when we do come back in March. <laughs> So with that being said, let's go for the Butcher Recap and talk about this week's episode of Walker. So we begin with, I think we're at the, no, 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 are we? I don't exactly remember where we are. I think we're just back. I think we first started back at the Ranger Station. 
Captain James is back. He's back in full four. He's wearing a cast, but he's still still pretty good. The Texas Rangers welcome back him open arms for some weird abnormal reason. Trey is there, even though he's not a member of the Texas Rangers. But my assumption is that okay, Mickey's not there anymore because Trey's reason to be in the scene is either because he's working at the school or he's with Mickey. This episode, he's on the school and Mickey's gone now. So we need to find any sort of reason to get him on so we can keep paying him that series regular money. And also, I, I keep checking my tea if it's ready to drink. It's not. And it, it, it's it, it's infuriating me because I'm, I'm a little bit parched. Early on in the episode, we've we barely even begun. Meanwhile, of course, Walker's not there because he's over at the Soretto trial, um, which was, it's not really the main trial. It's more as a kind of like a hearing to kind of per post bail for him. And he does. He, he manages to get enough doubt onto Liam's statement and then just all the evidence surrounding it. And even though the DA tries her damn best to try and distance herself from Liam, it doesn't work. Uh, he gets posted on bail for 50 grand, which, of course, obviously for a rich um, drug lord like him, it's it's easy paper money for him. So he gets it there. And Walker is, of course, a bit furious, a bit is taking it a little bit, a little bit nicer. Uh, because, again, Soretto has been involved in so much of Season 2's um, conflict already. Uh, putting the surveillance on the Walkers, putting Walker's life in je jeopardy, ki almost killing everyone involved in his family, that he he's frankly mad that, like, they had a chance to put him away for good and because of just unfortunate, unrelated circumstances, he's now not a free man, but he's walking the streets. He could, he could continue his criminal empire should he do so. Uh, but, 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 of course, both sides are, like, you know, trying to play it cool. Like, listen, don't have an argument. Don't have a public argument. It's going to help. It's going to hurt each other if you do it. Walker's trying to keep his cool. Well, Serena's really trying to mock him. But his lawyer's like, stop acting like a kid. Let's just get in the car. Continue on our business. But he's like, nah, I, I got to push Walker's button. Which is like, Why? Why, Soretto? Why? You're an idiot. Like, no offense. Like, obviously, if he was a real person, I said that about him. He'd probably kill me, but I don't care. But what is the... You don't poke the bear. You don't poke the sleeping bear. And Walker's, like, doing his damn best not to overburst at him or try to do anything like old Walker would do. He's calm. He's glad he's looking at him, smiling like, nothing more I can say. Nothing more I can do. And when he's leaving, Walker just has one... Sentence for him saying that I'm watching you now because, you know, obviously when you're on bail, you have to report in, you have to be posted, you can't leave the area where you post bail in. So, frankly, he is trapped in whatever area he is stuck in and, you know, they're going to use that to their, to their advantage whilst they're trying to come up with a case to put him back behind bars forever. Soretto's like, of course, like, drug lord 101's like, I don't care, I'm out again. You know, I might be on bail, but guess what? I'm back on the streets. I can continue my operation. I can keep doing my business. Um, it doesn't last long because he's at the di at, at a f quite dinner that he hasn't been to in months. And he's, of course, obviously playing, you know, the cards of like, okay, how do I get Walker? How do I kill him? How do I get my operations back up and running full time? And his lawyer's like, chill. You just got out. Don't do anything rash yet. Let, let's play our cards smart. Let's get you a, a decent case so that you don't have to go back in there. But Soraya doesn't care. Like... I'm I'm reviewing the rookie um, at the same time as Walker and rookie did something similar in terms of their um, some of their villains this season, where the vil one of the villains over in rookie the rookie side of things, he's very much like you know what, the, you're the lawyer you're gonna fix my problems I don't care like whatever I do it is your job to fix it or I kill you, and if you don't do it I kill you and I find someone else that can do it. That's literally how they think, because again, money is making no sense to them, and drugs probably corrupted their brains by this point. So that's true here, where I'm pretty sure if Soretto had the moment, he was like, "Yeah, you're gonna fix my problems. Like, I don't care. I'm gonna do what I need to do." Because in his mind, like Walker is the friend. I need to eliminate him as soon as possible, even though it would be stupid for you to do so because you got arrested on one, on one of the points of like you almost killed Walker the last time. So it's not the smartest thing for him to tr you try to kill him again, because people are gonna know. Yeah, it was him. It's clear as day here. It doesn't take an investigator to figure that out. Walker's conveniently there and, you know, they have a brief chat. Walker attempts to appeal to him to, listen, you're going to lose. You're going to end up dead in jail. Just make a plea deal right now. Let's get this all this trial case out of the way. Just just go away forever. But Serrano's obviously playing a different card where he still thinks he's, like, I'm the winner. Like, you know, I'm not, I'm the drug lord. I'm the kingpin. Like, I'm going to win. I don't, you think like you're just coming to me and trying to ask for my, for my surrenders, it's like, you got nothing on me. You got nothing. You just know, like, you think you, you that I know I got you got something on me. But in reality, you don't. So, you know. He's still playing the card. He's still trying to get jabbing at Walker. But, you know, all Walker could say right now is like, you know, 
the next time you make a mistake, I will be there and there will be no redo. And of course, Soretto was like, and again, this is the thing with most TV show villains, most villain, movie vill villains in general. When the hero tells them, you're going to lose. That's a fact. And they're like, no, I'm not. I'm not going to lose. And then when they, and they eventually lose, it's like, I love those moments. I really do. And, you know, we'll get that, we'll get that moment later on. But, um, but enough about Walker and that stuff. Let's get to the side stuff. Well, not really the side stuff, like the, the other plots. Um, August is trying to impress the girl he likes, of course, with his love of music. And, of course, obviously he and the other Davidson kid are kind of in a band together. Or they're just kind of a musical act together. And, sadly, August kind of screws himself over by saying, that, Oh, I have a band. And, you know, we're going to play tonight at the at the family, the restaurant, because, you know, we have that connection. And the girl's like, cool, can I film it for my YouTube channel? And I'm like, I cringe so hard, but then again, I'm doing a YouTube channel, so I'm like, what am I talking about here? Like, I'm clearly the audience here, and I'm like, I I, I don't know. I really don't know. Uh, but once August realizes that, and he tells the other Davidson kid about that, yeah, I kind of screwed up. I kind of put ourselves in this situation where I need to find two more people to be a band, including one of them has to be a singer. And... The Davidson kid is like, nah, I'm not doing this. Like, I am not a singer. Like, you told me to write a song. I will write a song. But I can't sing. I'm not going to sing. And in the meantime, um, Stella is tutoring another guy. Which I'm like, who is this other guy? I don't know you. Are we supposed to know you? Because, like, this entire episode is trying to make it seem like we know you. Which, in reality, I'm pretty sure he's just some dumb-dumb kid and Stella it somehow has decent enough grades to tutor him. Like, I, I, get, I don't know. It's, it's, I, I, of course, obviously, I've done eight reviews of this season already. I don't remember this kid at all. I really don't. So, he's probably just here to, like, create, storing up the, the stew for um, Davidson, Kid Davidson to kind of, like, make his move on Stella already. But I don't even know. I don't even know about that then. Um, I know Walker does spend some time at the, at the bar, and uh, I know Jerry's there and they're, they're having a moment like again I, th I think they buried enough of their romantic hatches at the point like yeah we could just be friends be two civil adults just talking about parental stuff and just looking back on what we were and how we should be teaching these kids the right way to do things or just you know a good way for them to figure it out on their own but Walker's still too wrapped up on the Serato case to really think about it um, oh yeah I know that Mr. Davidson has been making many many plays to try and repair his fr relationship with his son with his with his wife trying to get the marriage back on track and uh, you know he's like you know what we're going to focus on us when you're done with the Soretto. Once Soretto's done we can move on from this and we can focus on fixing each other cuz I don't want to divorce you. I want to be I want to stay married to you and I just I just remember myself what does he even do for a living? Is he a stay-at-home dad? Like, I really don't know. I, like, they never even talked about him. So, um, well, his profession, at least. So, I don't know. Um, but, however, of course, we know that he's involved adjac uh, adjacently to the whole Serato case with Walker. And he's trying to clean himself uh, free of the evidence. So, the last piece of information he has that could be beneficial to finally put a race Serato is the hard drive that he stole from the the surveillance lab back in a few back in the start of the season. So this is like a crucial thing. Like if he can give this to the police and legally put it in evidence, that would end Soretto's involvement. That would end his career forever. But of course, obviously, the two factor play is that the good guy factor for Mr. Davidson is like, I need to protect my family. Like if Soretto finds out that I hold the crucial key to ending his entire operation, he will kill me no matter what. And he will destroy that hard drive no matter what. And on the, on the selfish side, he's like, I need to find some way to exonerate myself so that I can keep my family. I can maybe have a decent term with the walkers. I could maybe, like, you know, be clean. Like, get myself out of the situation without facing any of the consequences of my actions, which was buying out Soretto's operation for the surveillance contract um, back in the start of the season again. Um, he eventually uh, was about to anonymously drop the the surveillance footage, I believe at the, at the police station or just somewhere nearby, he was parking and then he knows some of Soretto's goons. So he drives away and manages to avoid them long enough. And he ends up back at the Walker ranch where Liam jobless does no real financial income to his name. Um, is just working on working at home and also grandpa and grandma Walker now there this week for some reason. And he gets, he opens the door. It's, it's uh, Mr. Davidson and he wants to hire him to be his lawyer so that he can legally give him this piece of evidence. And he's like, okay, you're my lawyer now. You can't say anything to anyone about my involvement in this. And then once Liam starts asking him more questions, like, you know, about how did you get it? How did you get in contact with this evidence? How do you know this evidence? How, how are you even involved? And he's like, look, 
you have to trust me. You're my lawyer. So it's like attorney client privilege slash if I don't need to tell you what you don't need to know, what you need to do is you need to get this evidence in to the DA. You need to find a way to put this in court and you need to find a way to like scrub my name off it. Like I cannot put my name on the record for this because again, you know, he's selfish and also trying to think of his family. So it's selfish and honorary. It's hellfish or hollerary. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I, I'm, I'm literally running out of ideas here at this point, guys. I'm already done 300 episodes of this show. Like, you know, cut me some slack here. And so I think what happens the next point onwards is... Yeah, so eventually Liam does suit up. He gets over to the DA's office, presents that, yeah, I have this crucial piece of evidence that has all the evidence you guys need to take down Soretto, but the client only would give you the information, this piece of evidence, if you can promise that he, his name will not be put on the record and his identity re becomes neutral, clear, and he will not be charged for anything that he could be in relation to, which is a pretty big deal for someone they, they, they don't even know the name. And everyone's like, look, we need to take that Soretto. If this is the silver bullet to put him down forever, let's take it. Let, let's do it. Let's get this over with. So everyone's approval of it, so they reach out to the judge, but... And for some reason, he, Davidson's at the Walker Ranch, or, like, his ranch. I don't really know where he's at. I think... I don't know which ranch he's at. And then Trey weirdly comes out of nowhere to attack the dude, and, you know, it was all miscommunication. I'm like, what is Trey doing there? It's like, you're really trying to put Trey into the store where it's like, just do a grandpa and grandma walk and just say he's busy at the school. That's it. Like, no offense to Trey. I like Trey a lot as a character, but, like, after two amazing episodes with him, I, I mean, you could take a break with him. Like, you know, you don't need to constantly put Trey in her face. Like, just, you know, it's not that hard. You know, my opinion, like, don't put a character in if they have no real purpose to it. And again, I could be, I could have missed some context of Trey's second appearance of the episode. I apologize if I do, but that's just what my stance on it is. Like, I just, I, I, little, I legitimately don't remember. So I believe from there, um, he does get a call. Davidson gets a call from Soretto. Threatening, threatening him, they're like, yeah, I know you have this information against me. And also, he stupidly said, Liam, did you get me out of this? And he's like, he heard Liam's name, so now he knows Liam's involved in this, so I screwed over everyone here. And of course, the dare is like, look, I know about your wife, I know about your kid. If you put in that piece of evidence against me, you're gonna, all of them are gonna die. So, you're gonna find a way to give me that piece of evidence into my hands, and everything will be fine. Then don't worry about it. And of course, this means clear conscious problem for Davidson since, you know, once he gives him the tape, like, he has no real leverage against him, so Zora could easily just kill him for, like, trying to get him there, and that's how crazy some of these lords are, like, okay, you gave me the evidence, but you still almost got me taken down, like, you're still a viable threat, I need to take you out before you can try it again, which is a, honestly, a fair point, it's honestly something that I would do if I was a crime lord, which, thankfully, I'm not, or maybe I am, no, I'm kidding, I'm joking, I'm too innocent for that, or am I? I'm kidding. I'm joking. I'm not going to do the joke a third time. Davidson calls over Liam to kind of confirm that I am not taking this deal anymore. Like, we're, we're, we're pulling out of it. We're backing out of it. Like, forget about everything I said to you. Like, you know, I, I can't do this right now. Like, my family's too important. And Liam's like, look, don't be an idiot. Don't be stupid. You got to put in these evidence. We got, we always got your approval. Just let's get this over with. And he's like, nope, I'm not going to do it. So once they start putting the pieces together, they're like, yeah, it's Davidson slash... Yeah, he's about to back out of the whole deal slash Soretto's about to kill his ass, so they have to move pretty quickly. But back over to the kids. I forgot about the kids for a second. Um, so as August and the young Davidson's trying to come up with some ideas to try to figure it out, um, who could be their singer? Because apparently they found a, a drum player pretty quickly, apparently. Um, the, the guy that Stella's tutoring, that's a pretty decent vocal range, so they decide to ask him, even though young Davidson's like clearly jealous of the attention Stella's giving him. And so uh, they ask him off screen. He agrees and they're doing a little bit of rehearsal. And Stella is, that's the weird thing about young romance slash romance in general, where again, if you're single and you're interested in a couple of other people, then the person you think you're interested in, it's perfectly legal. Like no offense. Like you're single. Like it's a different story. If you're in a relationship and you're doing that, that's a, di that's different. But if you're single, you're mingling and you have a couple of guys that kind of catch your eyes, but you're still not certain yet. You can still play that card of like, um, yeah, they're, yeah, I'm interested in this guy, but also she's interested in this guy for the week. So it's not my fault. And also she doesn't know that Davidson kind of has a crush on her. So it's like, you can't really blame 
anyone for this. It just happens to be a misfortunate communication issue, which I'm like, I've had plenty of them. Don't get me started on that. And obviously, young Davidson's getting jealous. He's trying to, like, peers weigh in so he can become the singer, but it's not really working out. And, of course, it's creating bigger issues. And uh, eventually, they kind of settle the score and, like, you know what? It's fine. We'll, we'll go without you, um, Davidson. It's fine. Just take a step back. and we'll, we'll get back to them later to conclude that off in a bit. Um, so once they figure out that Davidson is going to arrange a drop, Jesus Christ, this entire day feels like forever, to be honest with you, or the, or the sun never sets on this freaking town. Um, Davidson heads over to the, to the train station where Soretto's going to meet him with his goons. And they're ready to do the transfer, but... There's something up with with, with Davidson. He's having a change of heart, but Soretto's like, look, you, you you can't be doing this to me right now. You can't. This is something that you're you're going to make a big mistake if you back out right now. And Davidson's about to pull the trigger. He's about to like pull out, but thankfully Walker comes in and everyone, all the Rangers show up and Soretto's like, damn it, fold again. And I'm like, ah, not surprised. Like, I, I legitimately thought that Ms. Davidson could have won in this episode. I almost fought that for a second, but That'll be the end. Um, gunfire ensues. Thankfully, Davidson did not give him the, the hard drive. So, Soretto's kind of like, you know, already convicting himself of like he just attempted murder on all fronts. So, he's already done for. So, this is it. This is it for Soretto. Like, Soretto knows, like, okay, I'm done for. Like, legally, by the eyes of the law, they'll arrest me just on any charge they can put me on. So, he's going to, he was about to kill someone, but Walker talks him out of it. But he does try to run away. A brief car chase is through. Not the best car chase I'll admit in the world. It's kind of weak in my opinion, but they have they have some a couple of tense moments on it that, and I do believe like there's a moment where like I think Walker could have taken a shot or Soretta could have taken a shot or something of that sort, but but Walker notices something coming up ahead, so he pushes back, and um, he finds uh, there's a truck in the way and Soretta notices the last man's like ah shit, so and honestly I'm like practically wise this was a pretty uh, uh, impressive feat to do like just seeing like the truck hit the car and I'm pretty sure there was a stunt driver there like I'm obviously not sure I'm obviously not stupid to think the actor was in there don't, don't worry about that and so I want to say yes so Soretto Soretto's van goes over a little a little hill but you know he you think he survived the car is not a total wreck Walker gets out of it but sadly Soretto's sustained too much in, internal injuries to really survive so and Walker's kind of bummed out because, you know, he really wanted Soretto to suffer in jail and I actually pay for his crimes. And I guess there's a part of Soretto's, like, I get to die not paying for my act. Like, okay, there's a, like, this is a whole debate of, of people that, that that we have that is going to jail the best punishment or is dying the best punishment. Um, It's always for me, like, it's case by case. I think Soretto... Should have went to jail for this. I don't think he should have died, but you know, then again, I would have left the door open for him to come back as a villain. So I'm pretty sure this was like we did as much as we could with the character. This is how we ended. Uh, but yeah, so Serato's dead. It's over. Um, which kind of still bums out Walker because he really wanted to go away, but that didn't really happen. I don't think we really get much updates on everyone. Oh yeah, I know Liam has one more scene with Mr. Davidson that he knows that Davidson was involved somehow. I don't remember if Davidson admits 100% if he, if about the part where he bought out the surveillance uh, people that were spying on the walkers. I don't think he admits that. But I know Liam's like, on like I know it. Like you were shady somehow. I was right at least on something. Uh, but Liam doesn't know 100% the whole story yet. So it's not enough for him to really put him on that mark, in, in my opinion. So, um, we leave it up there. Um, I know we get back to the, the stool, the family bar, the family restaurant, and, um, we just see the performance going on and, you know, it's a very nice, you know, perform. I don't know if it's a cover or anything. I really don't know. It, it seemed like an original song to me. I really don't know. I'm not a musician guy in terms of American Western country music. I'm really not. Um, uh, but I'm pretty sure that this guy was like really passing on the, the Davison's, um, song as his own so um that was the only issue i saw with it in my opinion so uh and also davidson like i think he was about to do some sort of big romantic joke he had a couple of tickets underneath his pocket so i'm like i don't know if he was gonna invite stella out to something as like a date i don't really know they didn't, they, re they kept that vague or i just wasn't uh clued in 100 but once 
Davison saw the way Stella was looking at him. And again, it's, it's another thing where we're like, if you can sing to a girl and you can impress them, like they're going to be swoon over you for maybe about a couple of weeks, give or take. Don't worry about that. Um, so I want to say what happens next is, yeah, so after the performance, you know, August saves the day. He manages to keep the girl, but Stella's interested in the other dude now. Davison's kind of taking the, um, the Coke shot of shame, you know, for teenagers, thankfully. No underage drinking allowed here for now. And Jerry's kind of giving him some decent advice, not on the romantic front mostly, but he's like, you know, like, you know, he's still the new kid in town and, you know, he needs to not be labeled as that. He has to, like, come out of it and just say, you know what? Make your mark. Do, you know, do, do your thing. Get out, of, get out of that, you know, the new kid shell, as we call it here. And also, he's like, like hey, if you like Stella, you got to make a move because the guy made a move already. You gotta make your next move too. And I'm like thinking to myself, oh my God, where was this advice a few years ago? Where was that advice? Uh, but that's a story for another damn day. Um, I know, I think Jerry looks at Walker at a, like a romantic way. Like, I think she was like kind of thinking the same way of like, maybe I should really make that move on Walker. But we don't know 100%. I know Walker and Davison have a moment in the bar. I, oh, AD, um, ADA, um, Davison. Yeah, ADA Davison, uh, not not Mr. Davison, uh, where it's like, yeah, the case is over, and like you know, even though that Serato's dead, even though it's not the result that we all wanted, it was still something that, um, hey, you know, we could have really, we could have really um, took in that win there, but of course, obviously, they're still thinking about the the hard drive and like, where did it come from from Liam? And it's like they need to know, but they don't know, and you know, it's still kept under a big mystery for them. I want to say, was there another scene with anyone else? I don't think there was. I think we just have a cutaway to ADA, ADA Davidson at her office or at her home office. And she's taking a look at the, at the hard drive for herself. Because I'm pretty sure once after the Serato thing was done, I think they just said, screw it. Here's the hard drive, you know, as like just like a piece of physical evidence from the crime scene. And she was looking at it and she finds the... The confessional tape from Lee from Cordell that admits that he brought the lantern into the into the the Davison Ranch all those years ago, and he doesn't remember bringing it back home. Mean that there is a decent chance that we know of that Walker was the one who was responsible for the fire that led to to Mister Davison's death. Well, Senior Davison's death, and we don't really get to see like a really decent. Opinion of what her or what ADA Davis's opinion of the matter is. If she's shocked or is she not surprised or is she's about to like plan her revenge against the Walkers, we don't know because that's where the episode ends and we will not figure out the results of that cliffhanger until March third. Great, um, a whole month off. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, but uh, but this, barring the month delay, not delay the the break. Honestly, these three episodes worked worked very well with each other. It really did. It, it kind of brought this, like, not a trilogy epilogue, let's say. It, it brought definitely, like, you know, we were continuing the Soretto case at a decent pace, building up the stakes, kind of leading it off into that point where it's, like, the whole surveillance stuff and the whole Davison involvement thing kind of took a back burner throughout most of these three episodes until this one. And then it kind of came back to play as we were really ramping up the conflict, as we were really ramping up, you know, Soretto's now final involvement in the series. And I'm just curious, like, now, like, you know, okay, so Serrano's done. Like, the physical threat is over. But now we have the emotional threat of, you know, the Walkers versus the Davis. And that's going to come back into play right now as we approach the true latter half of the season. Again, I don't know how long the season is going to go for. They haven't confirmed it's 13 or 18 or we don't know yet. Um, they haven't confirmed an episode order yet for it. I, I hope it's maybe 18 again. It seems like that's... I think the magic number, like, because I, I know a lot of other CW shows are doing 13 episodes orders now because it's just easier to tell that, you know, tighter Netflix approach to it, which I kind of hope for. But uh, we'll see how that all goes. We'll see. But overall, with this episode, I think they brought the Serato conflict mostly to a decent close. Uh, I think the kids subplot was kind of like, you know, cliche teen drama at best, trying to like, you know, stretch out this romantic subplot, which again, I don't really mind. 100%, but it's always the question of, like, was it really worth it? Is it worth it? So, we'll see how that all goes as we approach the uh, conclusion of this um, season when we come back in March. Uh, but again, uh, for me, it was alright. 
they did enough in service to bring Sorrento to a close. Um, now, Walker versus Davidson is up next. Uh, I can't wait to see how that's going to pan out. Like, tr- once again, bring back the true uh, Western-style family conflict back into play. So, I can't wait to see how that do- that that goes. And, yeah. For me, I'm really... Um, I can't wait till we come back next month. And, I, you know, i rather prefer we get a full month and then more consistent episodes than do two weeks... Two episodes, two weeks, like, it got annoying for me last season, so this will, like, I'll just do a month, I'll shut up for a month, and we'll come back after that, so, um, yeah. So, for me, I'm gonna give this episode, so, one and, thumbs, one and a half thumbs up, uh, I still liked it. Uh, let me know in the comments below, what did you think of this week's episode of Walker? Let me know, I'm always down for conversation down below, and that's gonna do it for me today, everyone, so if you're unaware, this has been What's the Two from ActionX, reviewing every episode in the second season of Walker, if you wanna know what we're doing overall on what's the two besides our walker episode reviews um we're currently doing rookie season four episode reviews and nancy drew season three episode reviews each and every week after their brand new episodes on abc and the cw respectfully uh if you don't care about walker we'll be like i said we'll be back in a month uh so we have a month off so you have a month off for me so don't worry about that um if you're curious on what's gonna happen in the time slot while we're away uh we're gonna be posting our doctor who reviews because we kind of got derailed because of the holidays last year so Doctor Who and some other side stuff will be taking over the Walker time slot as we kind of get repaired towards that schedule and kind of gives us some time away to uh, fix all that. And so, yeah, so now we go from there. Um, but again, if you're unaware, this has been What's in the Two from Action X. Please subscribe to us on YouTube.com slash ActionX videos. Ring that bell for notification when our next episode review is live. Please also like, favorite, share this review if you want to. And please also follow us on social media to stay up to date with any sort of updates for the channel. Um, also another thing to note is that we're launching a brand new channel, um, next week. So stay tuned for that front. We're gonna have a big promotional campaign starting soon. Um, uh, so that's gonna also keep us, thankfully Walker being off the air kind of allows us to kind of have that time to work on that. So, um, I'm excited on both for us on that, but if you only care about Walker again, um, for all you members out there, stay safe out there in this time being, I'll see y'all in a month, but until then, um, peace out.